Hello, welcome back to Anthracite Horror Stories. And I'm just going to do a quick video here outlining why the Avondale Colliery disaster of 1869 was so deadly. And this is not the plan, these are not the plans for the Avondale Colliery, but rather the Holland Backbreaker, the Lehigh and Wilkes-Barre Coal Company in Wilkes-Barre. And today, the golf course is situated, very beautiful golf course is situated there where the colliery once stood. This was the colliery in uh, teens, 20s. This is the Hollenbeck. You can see that shaft right there. Be the same shaft as this. So the whole point of this, I just want to explain why the Avondale was a death trap for the miners. As you can see, these are plans that came from a book. Uh, I don't know what year, but these, these um, anthracite inspectors report books had all these plates and plans so I'd imagine every colliery out there doesn't matter if it's Pine Ridge or Butler or Hollenbeck like obviously here Plymouth uh, Avondale they all have these original plans so it's cool to know that these head frames actually could somehow be reproduced historically if someone was rich enough that's what I would do but all these interesting architectural drawings do exist somewhere, in theory, to this very day. So, the Avondale only had one opening. And we'll pretend that this is the Avondale. And it was a vertical haulage shaft. Which that's what that is. That's a two-compartment haulage shaft. There you see the left and the right. And it was a cage. And the men would enter, the animals would enter, such as mules. Coal cars would go down, come up, go down, come up, and they would hoist the coal up the head frame to right there. These mechanisms, these, these wheels here, um, would have a wire rope, which is right there, go around it. They were powered by steam engines. This is called a winding engine. And they ran on coal which burned in the boilers. There's grate bars to let out the ash. Created steam, which powered the winding engine. And here's a chimney. Very simple. Look at how easy that is. They would burn coal with water, creating steam. Boiling the water, creating steam. There's the steam pipe. Boop, boop, boop. Goes into there. Some pistons right there. And that would actuate, turn that arm on that wheel, and it would just hoist up the coal cars. So then the coal cars would come up vertically up to here, and then they would dump their coal. You can see how that door is open. It's really cool. And then the bars, coal would go over that, and we go into this, that trommel, kind of like a gold mine in a sense, and it would turn cylindrical trommel. You can see side plans. This is the same colliery, but just a different angle. It's a very primitive. <clears throat> it's a very primitive breaker. A, because the breaker was built in conjunction with the shaft head frame right over the mine opening. They weren't allowed to do that. I believe post Avondale, so 1870 onward, 1869 onward, that's when the disaster occurred was 1869. So this is why Avondale was such a death trap. Again, this is Hollenbeck, not Avondale. They built the only mine entrance, which is a vertical shaft, right over the mine entrance. They put this big hulking wooden structure. So this was their only way in and out, it was a vertical hoist. So what would happen if say the breaker caught fire and it's roaring and it burns and it catches everything on fire and it burns down the shaft while well, the men are trapped. In addition to it being trapped, what does fire need? It needs oxygen. So down there is oxygen, or they're soon to 
would soon would be oxygen past tense because that's going to act as a chimney. The draft would be intense because the fire is consuming the wood and it needs oxygen to burn. So it's going to suck all that air out of the mine and up and it just burns. It's an inferno. So what happened in Avondale was it literally suffocated all the men to death. There was no fire in the mine. I mean, the fire started going down the Braddis lining. So you see here on the side, um, that would have been lined with wood. So some of that caught fire, but it burned the shaft down and it burned the breaker down and it suffocated the men. Literally, it just asphyxiated them in the mine, which is a real shame. So yeah, the Hollenbach and a whole array of collieries use this efficient for them system of building the processing plant and the shaft as one unit right over the mine entrance and that's why in later years you saw um, shafts being more solitary away from the breaker itself please disregard that phone call so here we have a gentleman at the bottom of a shaft so at the bottom of this shaft, that's what it would look like. That, that's a footman, and he's putting coal cars on the cage to go up and get hoisted out of the mine. And then you come up. And then they would go down there, and then they would get dumped for processing. And this is cool. This is later technology. See, these were these roller screens or whatever like a trommel. Later on, this isn't the same collar, this is Salem Hill. Floating coal away from slate and a cone cleaner. The processes became more advanced. Such as here, they're, you know, they're using sand, they're using heavy media. And it just helped due to physics of the coal and slate and rock. Um, in relation to one another to help separate more efficiently. That's how you had these cone cleanings. There was the Menzies cone systems um, in the Huber. And here's the Breaker Boys. Obviously, a Breaker Boys would have been sitting somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. What's cool about this is it even shows... the full gauge railroad cars. You can see the chutes will go overhead and just dump right into the railway car. And then the uh, locomotives that take it out to market. Just a quick video showing why having a vertical shaft attached to a breaker over the only mine entrance would be a bad idea. Now for Avondale, they had to have at least two other, uh, one other, so two total mine entrances, uh, one for escape, obviously, but a lot of collieries had 20, 30 entrances overall. That's why a lot of miners were able to make it out of Knox. And they could even get into different collieries through barrier pillars, etc. But yeah, if you're ever bored, start Googling these plans. They are out there on the internet, and I got this one on eBay from the 1800s. Pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching this video, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good day.